idea of stick control today. If any of you who have gone through any kind of formalized percussion training, you have definitely seen this wonderful book and I've studied it for years and years. Um, it's part of the program that we all learn. And so I wanted to take the ideas that are in this book um, and apply them to Brazilian rhythms and use Brazilian rhythms to teach um, the techniques that are taught in this book, because it's really important. And I'd suggest anybody who wants to take drumming seriously, check out this book. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the comments afterwards, but it's very important. We've all, anybody who's been through a program, we've done this book, but I wanted to make it a little bit more fun because it's, it's a little dry. It's, it's a lot of repetitive stuff. So I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting and move some Brazilian rhythms into that scene. So I'm going to be set up here playing up here. So hopefully you can see pretty good into this camera. Um, you're welcome to play either traditional grip or play match grip, whatever uh, you want to work on today. Generally, traditional grip we only use for drums that are slung uh, sideways. In marching band, we use it like this out of tradition. Uh, but you mainly want to use this kind of a grip if you are playing a drum that's slung like a kaisha at an angle. Um, so it's up to you. I will probably switch back and forth a little bit today because I need to work on my match grip a little bit. Um, you are welcome to do it either way. Quick review of stick holding. Um, I don't want to go into it too much because we got a lot to cover, but my way of the right hand or the dominant hand, it's like you're handing someone a letter, just like that. Here, this is for you, and you just put a stick in there. So all of your fingers are on the stick, your thumb and your pointer finger and the knuckle are even, no, fin no fingers out, no thumbs out, nice even spot there, and you're using the hinge of your wrist, no side to side swiping, just straight up and down, the stick an extension of your arm, and your drum should be at a height, can't really see it too much in this angle of the video, that you're not overextending, your elbow shouldn't be straight, nor should it be chicken wing, okay? And if you want to use traditional grip on this side, um, you basically just put this in here. You're going to tuck your ring finger underneath and attach your pinky finger to your ring finger like that. Create this little standing point between these two points here with space, uh, open space here. And then you're going to curl your pointer finger over the top staple it with your thumb keep it nice in place thumb to knuckle and then your middle finger just kind of hangs out and doesn't get in the way and your rotation is like you're turning a doorknob you don't want to get into any wrist motion on this one this is all just a turning rotation kind of motion here and just make sure you leave space there don't let your palm sit up you want to have it in a nice straight angle like that with a little bit of curve from the stick not quite 90 degrees but somewhere so however you're gonna do it, either that way or that way, works just fine. Um, and now we are gonna get into some basic exercises. Let me bring up my transcriptions up here. If you don't read music, do not worry about it. Um, hopefully this might actually help you understand a little bit of music reading. Um, everything we're gonna be doing today is in 4-4, so you can count along to this. Three, four. One, two, three. Four. And as a quick uber fast explanation, the notes we have up here are eighth notes. When you have a single line connecting all the notes or a single flag hanging down, those are eighth notes. If you have two, it's twice as fast. They're sixteenth notes. If there's none, it's a quarter note and you just play it on the beat. Rushing through all of that, let's get to us actually playing. So here's some basic exercises to work on our hand to hand abilities. And this is uber basic, good way to warm up at various uh, metronome tempos. So let's just go through this a little bit. I did all of these exercises also starting right hand and left hand because dexterity in playing both sides first is very, very important. So let's just do the first one. And all it is is a right, left, right, left, right, left. Um, and so you know what we're focusing on on this. You don't want to just, okay, I can go right, left, right, left. You want to be going for even sound between each of your hands, even stick lift between each of them, even tension in both of your hands, even shoulder tension. You should not have shoulder tension. Relax. Um, so rather than be bored by a simple exercise, really use it to think of the minutia, the little details of your playing. So let's go at a nice slow tempo. Two and three. 
three and four and. So while we're doing this, notice that I'm keeping the sticks pretty close to the head. You don't want it to fly up each time. Your resting point is right here about an inch or two above the drum head. And as we come up, I'm bringing it up about this high. And the others, then after you play, the stick stays just above the drum head, but not letting it bounce more than one time. So let's do that again. One, two, ready, and. of your sound. A lot of people play their dominant hand much louder than their non-dominant hand. All right, we're going to stop and then start again with left hand or non-dominant hand leading. One, two, ready, and stop. Other hand, go. If you're practicing this alone at home, make sure you do it to a metronome yourself on your time. Not all of us are perfect metronomes. Do this for years of study. One, two, ready, and stop. So let's just go a hair faster on that first one still, and we'll switch back and forth between right and left. So our counts are one and two and ready, go. to the left hand. One, two, ready, and stop. Other hand, go. For a lot of people, the non-dominant hand is, a, is much trickier. I even have a harder time talking over playing left hand lead. So our count, one, and two, And then when you're warming up at home, you can take that as fast as you want. Start slow, but then work your way up to one and two and three and four and work your way up to something like 120 BPM, um, which is double the time of the, the clock. Or one, one thousand, two, one thousand, one, dun, 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 dun. stars and stretch forever is 120. All right, so let's move on to the next section. Now we're looking at groups of threes where we're going to be sticking in the top part. It's going to be right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. So it's a group of three, group of three, group of two, and that together equals eight because we're playing eighth notes. That makes a full bar. Um, so let's look at the first one. Let's take it nice and slow. Just get comfortable with the sticking, starting with your dominant hand. One and two and ready, go and one. And this pattern here that's being played by the right hand is the palmas, the clapping that we do in samba or bayon. This is really pervasive in Brazilian rhythms right here. So we're just using that as the basis of our right hand sticking and then filling in the extras with our left hand. So if we break it down between the two different sounds, this hand is going one. Let's try it with the non-dominant hand lead left if you're a righty like me. 
So the breakdown of it is we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, fill it. Left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right. Okay, so is it together? Still going for evenness of sound? That's that feeling. It's nice and slow, so you're not might not feel exactly this idea. Oh no, internet issues. Bummer. Well, if anyone's having internet issues, I will be posting this onto my YouTube channel um, soon after the class ends. So if you're having a hard time following on to the live because of internet connectivity, you can catch me later on my YouTube channel. Yeah, promo. All right, so let's put this together now. We're gonna start with the dominant hand for me, the right hand. Uh, play it. Let's do it four times and then we'll stop and we'll switch to the left hand. One and two and ready and. So if you notice, you can see my knee here tapping the beat. And this is really important when you're practicing at home, even if you have the metronome on, that you keep your foot going through all of this, especially for a pattern like this that is a little bit syncopated. I, am, I need so much work on my left hand, but I think all of us need work on our non-dominant hand. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. You can count through it, tap your foot to it. All of these tools will help you when you're going much faster. All right, so let's look at the third cell here. Um, this is also in groups of threes, but instead of doing the double on the non-dominant hand, you're gonna be doing the double on the dominant hand, the first one. So instead of right, left, left, right, left, left, we're going, Right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. And it's still groups of threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And I'm tapping my foot right here. So let's take it one pass, nice and slow, just to make sure we get our stickings right. And if it helps you to say them out loud, that's good too. So here's my tempo, two, three, four. Hand lead goes left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. Okay, so you're tapping your foot if you can. Last time, ready, and go. Whew, good brain exercises, and we're just getting warmed up. So again, these are good warm-ups to do. You can take them nice and slow to start, then slowly increase the speed until the point where it almost feels out of control. You never want to go beyond where you can actually control these. You want to still be able to count and still be able to think about what you're doing. But eventually you can get to something like
can play with these and combine them in different ways. And you throw some accents on these and these become 90% of the Kaisha rides in the Samba schools. Like uh, Portela uses one like that. Where they're going right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, and just putting an accent on the first of the double and it becomes that ride. these patterns are very universal, especially when it comes to the syncopation of Brazilian rhythms. All right, so let's go to the next page of stuff. So we did um, groups of twos and threes, and now let's look more at groups of threes and fours. Now, if any of you are familiar with Hepaniki playing, you're doing groups of three strokes in the right hand. A lot of us who play Happy Niki get really strong three strokes in our right hand and then our left hands are useless. So we're going to do all of this right hand and left hand because it's very good for us as balanced musicians. So the first pattern is going to be right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, right, right. And then we, when we switch, we're going to go left, 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 right, left, 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 right. And at the moment right now, all of these are going to be fully sticked, as we say. It's going to be a full wrist motion, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When these get faster, these groups of threes turn into bounces. Rather than playing each individual note, you end up doing one drop of your wrist and then two more bounces. You're getting faster, better, my left. Where it's one lift one attack, and then you control the bounce that comes after that to just do two more. <laughs> my right hand is much stronger than my left on groups of threes. Um, so I'll be working on that, but let's start here nice and slow. And then as you increase it, just remember there is gonna be a breaking point where you have to go from individually sticking each note to letting the bounces do the work for you. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, ready, and. Left hand lead, go. So let's try to take that up a little bit faster so you can feel the difference between the, uh, the individual sticking and the bouncing. So there we go. One, two, one, and two, and three, and four, and. If we were going to get up to the tempo where it would almost turn into 16th notes, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you want to push yourself when you're practicing at home to increase the tempo more and more and more until you can't control it anymore and hang out just below where you can control it and practice there till you can and get comfortable with it, then start increasing that metronome even more. All right, let's look at the second cell here. We're again looking at groups of threes, but we're gonna go right, 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 left, 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 right, left. So three, three, one, one. So kind of the same idea that we did in the accents earlier of ba, 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 ba. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, five. Okay, let's give it a shot, nice and slow. One, two, ready, and move. talk and do that pattern at the same time. Just make sure everything's nice and easy. One, two, ready, and... a pattern I don't do too often so speaking freely while I play it is a little tricky so let's do the same thing but just start with our non-dominant and our left one two ready and Let's go just a hair faster and then we'll do a direct switch switch a little pause in between from the right hand lead to the left hand lead. So here's our tempo. Go one, two, three, four. Let's move on to the last one where we're just doing straight groups of fours. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's drop down tempo just a little bit and then we'll increase it again. One, two, three, four. Our groups of threes and fours again work on home going faster and faster till they all get super comfy let's try to do all three of those in a row so let's do four times of each cell um, and we're going to do four times right hand lead and stop four times left hand lead and stop move to the next one four times right four times left four times right four times left okay here we go one and two and ready and And go. One, two, ready, and next cell, go. Keep your foot going if you can. I don't want to miss. Left hand, go. Sweet. So hopefully that's a good warm up. Shake out your wrists if you need to. Um, at that point, now we can get to the juicy stuff. So again, transcriptions for uh, all these, all this material are in the video description here. There's a link to uh, my Google Drive where this is located if you want to study this at home. All right. So to continue working on our counting and continue working on our uh, syncopation, 
We're going to talk about 16th notes now. Everything we did before was 8th notes, and now we get into the land of 16ths. Um, and we call this right hand lead or dominant hand lead when the dominant hand is playing on the beat, where they're on the place where you tap your foot and on the ands is all assigned to the dominant hand and all the in-between notes are assigned to the non-dominant hand. So if you're counting each beat, button, two, three, each of those are divided into four. If you're counting one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So the ones and the ands are right hand and the e's and the uhs are left hand. And that's just how if you were sticking it evenly, all the 16th notes, one e and a, two e and a, just like that. So this exercise here is going to work on playing just certain 16th notes and developing familiarity with uh, which, which notes are played by the right hand and which notes are played by the left hand. So this, is, uh, this whole setup here is what we call a check pattern where the first measure, um, the quarter notes right there, that's the thing we're gonna return to each time. We're gonna play that measure, then we play the next measure, then we repeat back to the first measure, then we play the third one, then we repeat back to the first, and then we play the fourth. And so it's like a first, second, third ending to this whole thing. So it'd be measure one to two, one to three, one to, or excuse me, one to four, yep. So looking at just the first bar, just quarter notes with your right hand, And then bar two, we're just adding in the next subdivision of 16th note. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And whether or not you want to use the, the one E and a counting system, I want you to either say vocally or think in your mind all the subdivisions. I, I learned in drum line, most of us learned in drum line to use thuts. <laughs> So even though you're not playing the rest notes, you're still counting them to make sure that the spacing is even throughout all that stuff. So let's just try bar one and bar two and our count two, three, four. not complicated obviously if you want a brazilian reference um to this this is really similar to what you play in maracatu so getting comfortable with playing a downbeat and the e after will help you with maracatu all right so let's look at the next one bar three is going to be playing the fourth subdivision your downbeat in your right hand is still there Instead of playing the E, you're playing the uh. So it's one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. I literally where you're counting one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So make sure you're keeping those counts going or else why? Why? This is for learning and training. So let's do, uh, I think we can skip to the third bar. Let's go right to that one. So the third or the, the last bar there, we're still keeping our downbeat <clears throat> consistent here. And now we're playing both the second and the fourth 16th note iteration, the E and the uh on the left hand. The only one we're leaving out is the and, which would normally be played by the right hand. So we're doing all the left hand notes um, and the rhythm is going So the idea, if you want to try this just to get used to he feeling and hearing your hand, your right hand on the beat, you can keep this here if you've got a way to make two different sounds. Keep this idea of the quarter note going. 
going here and you add your back to one, two, then to the third bar, back to the seven. And really integrate how your right hand is always holding the beat in the system of counting. All right, so let's try it all together. Let's go a hair faster and then uh, we'll follow this repeat cycle of one, two, one, th uh, three, one, four. All right, here we go. About one, two, ready, and. So let's, I want to crank this one up a little bit. Um, the bar three, if you want to tie this to Brazilian percussion as well, is your idea of beijão e oi. It's the basic tocando reto, the straight ahead samba, cha, 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 cha. Um, that, that's those accent marks. One B and a B and a C B and a C B and a C B. And the last bar is one of the more common syncopated patterns. If you're playing third surdu, the downbeat actually is on your left hand. cutting patterns that we do in uh, Samba Batucada. Alright, so let's go through this one more time a little bit faster. About here? I think we can do it. One E and a two E and a ready and a go. Again, practice it at various tempos so it gets really comfortable. Make sure you're thinking or speaking the subdivisions of all the notes that you're not actually playing. All right, moving on. Sweet, yes. All right, so we already played the downbeats where the right hand plays. The other place that the, down, the right hand plays is the ands. And so if you're tapping your foot here, two, three, four, one, and two, Exactly halfway in between, separate, uh, halfway in between where you're tapping your foot and where you're playing on the uh, here. One and two and three and four and seven. So now we're going to do the same exercise we just did instead, but we're just doing the ands instead of the downbeats on the right hand. So there's going to be no downbeat at any point throughout this entire exercise except in your foot. The downbeat is in your foot or speaking it if that helps you as well. So the first variation that we have, the first repeat ending is going to be the left hand's coming in first. Oi, Joan, tudo bem? It's going to be one E and. Okay, our ands are here. It's going to come right before the and. Three, four, one E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. The right hand is still rocking on the end. Same measure again. One E and two E and three E and four E and. And I think it's really important. Rather than thinking you're resting on the beat, you're playing the beat, but you're just playing it with your foot or with your mind, thinking one, two, three, four. Otherwise, it's really easy to get lost in all these notes that are off the beat. So that's our first variation. The second variation, if this is our and two and three, the left going to come after one and a two and a three and a four and a one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a so again using your foot this time we're kind of using the rhythmic figure we're playing to land on the foot instead of playing off of it um, where we're going one e and playing off of where this starts we're landing on a one and a two and a three and a four and a five. Sweet. So let's go now to the last one where, again, we're playing all the left uh, spots. We're going to play the E's and us as well as the and here. So rhythmically, we're going with our foot is here. 
Boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 three, da, 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 four, da, 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 one. And the right hand just stays consistent. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just to demonstrate that the right hand is still staying consistent. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go and do this whole thing now. Uh, again, measure one, two, one, three, one, four. Let's give it a shot. About the same tempo. Two, three, four, one. So that's covering all of those subdivisions, and now we're going to co cover literally all of them. <laughs> we're going to go to playing both the downbeats, which we already did, and the ands, which we already did. Just going to put that together and then throw in all the left hand iterations. So for tapping our foot here, With a lot of my new students, uh, people tend to get lost in long strings of long notes. They're playing, I don't know how many I've done. One easy trick around this is just to count your rights or your dominant hand, because it's much easier to count instead of going one, two, three, four, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, just counting the right hands instead of all the things. Because you know it's always going to be an even number and you know how many times it's going to repeat because your left hand is just following the right in that situation. Um, so let's run through this whole section down one time. Uh, one, two, one, three, one, four, and then we can get on to some other stuff. So a little faster, let's go. One and two and ready, go. And you can do all of that left hand lead as well. I didn't write in the stickings for all of that, but the same. Let's just try it down real quick, doing a left hand lead. One, two, three, four. can be some homework you can take this home and print it out uh, with your left hand stickings work that that out yourself all right so now we come to Telakateku, a most important and vital rhythm to samba this uh, this rhythm is typically played by tambourine 
It can also be covered on various other instruments, but it's nice and syncopated and it's a combination of singles and doubles. So I adapted an idea of an exercise I, I learned in drumline, which is a combination of doubles and singles, but we're gonna do it with Telekateku instead. So this is all gonna be done. Hi, Lana, welcome. Um, with the, for now, all right hand for this whole exercise and all left hand. So we have a bar of intro, and then we're gonna repeat the middle section a couple times, and then the last time we'll end on beat three. So let's count this out real quick. The first bar, we're gonna go one and two and three and four e a uh, and that leads us to take away beat one uh like we already did in the previous exercises while we were playing the right hand on the ends um so try that out one two first bar go that sets us up for Telecateco that comes in, the actual rhythm of Telecateco comes in the second bar. This is just an intro to it. Try So just to break it down real quick for those who maybe don't read, it's gonna be two single notes, a double, two more single notes, a double, and it kind of gets into this repeating cycle of Think of it in common in uh, groups of single notes and double notes. So let's do the intro and then we'll get into the Telekateku bar. Ready and. So let's try that again just to make sure we're good and getting in and repeating that and then we'll try it with our left hand. One, two, ready, and... Let's try it with our left hand. Again, we're making sure that every stroke, both the singles and the double strokes we're doing here are same volume, same height, same intensity, all that good stuff. So left hand, two, ready, and. So let's do it up a little bit faster before we get into all the double bounces and stuff. So we'll do it, um, let's repeat the phrase in the middle three times and then we'll end. And then we'll switch hands right away. So da, 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 ready and. And then you can take this as fast as you want to go and or as fast as you can comfortably go, go um, till you're working on these doubles really fast. Uh, let's go back here. One, two, three, four. I personally can really see the difference between the strength of my doubles and my left hand and my right hand. So that's something I need to work on and I'm sure most of us do as well. Um, so let's switch over now. We're gonna start to work towards double bounce rolls. Um, so double bounce rolls um, are the is the idea that if this is your basic pattern of playing 16th notes, you're gonna just be doubling up the notes for each hand instead of get a 
with the tempo, it's getting back to this idea of one hit, one stroke, and then the second note is a bounce. And it really requires some time spent staring at a drum pad or whatever you're practicing on, working on controlling the bounce of these sticks. Because the stick is going to bounce. And it's up to us to let it bounce, to catch it, and then for force one more bounce out of it. So when you're working on this at home, just try throwing down a double. For me, it's literally letting it happen and then catching the stick on the second one. You can see it better in the left hand. It's like, bam, it bounces, and then I'm using my stick, my fingers to grab it, and I'm hitting that second one. I'm not letting this, the fingers go flying off. They should stay connected to the stick at all times. That takes time and practice, like any skill that you're trying to develop, um, but hopefully this exercise here will help us do that. So we're using the same basic framework of Tilakateku, but we're adding in um, on beat three, a right, right, left, left, right, right. So using the Tilakateku, we get in one and two. The basic framework of the pattern that we just did is still there, but where the two eighth notes are on beat three, those are going to turn into sixteenth notes because we're going right, right, left, left. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So let's let's get into this nice and slow and uh, just repeat it till it gets a little bit more comfortable. So starting in the intro bar, one, two, ready, and. Again, making sure that your foot is tapping through each of those doubles, right, right, left, left, should be even as if you were playing, but you're going, okay, so you want it to sound exactly the same. Um, so let's try it one more time, a little bit, just a tiny bit fast. Da, 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 ready, and... So now we're going to switch it to the left hand, and when we get to uh, beat three of the second bar, we're just going to be doing a left, left, right, right, instead of the right, right, left, left. So let's do it nice and slow, repeat it. One and two and ready and go. Hopefully that makes sense and let's uh let's go faster. A little bit faster on the left. Let's see if we can take it up uh, up tempo just once through to see what that feels like. <clears throat> if you can't quite keep up speed wise, you can um, either count it out or leave out the doubles. You can always go back to this uh, pattern here. It should line up the same um, and there should be no conflicts of rhythm. So let's go about one, two, right hand.
exercise, but I'm pretty proud of that one. So let's move to the next one, which is almost the same thing, but we're adding one more double uh, section. So in here where we had an eighth note on the and of two, we're gonna throw a double on the and of two. So in the Telecateco rhythm, it's composite, all the things together is da da ba da ka da ka da ka da 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 e a e and a three e and a four e a e a e and a three e and a four e a. So looking specifically at just the repeated measure, um, starting with the right hand lead, it's going to be three four one. So now to look at that same uh, section, left hand lead, nice and slow, we go three E and a four E and a one. So we're getting up to almost a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stroke roll, uh, if you're counting rudiment styly. Um, but let's do this one from the beginning now. We'll start with the right hand, do the intro, repeat that bar, let's say four times, and then end, and then we'll switch to the left. One and two and ready, go. All right, if there's anyone who wants to go up tempo real quick just to feel how this feels, let's give it a shot. One, two, three, four. is also a very fun one and if you want a challenge for home you can build these up where you do like the intro bar do the first one that had no double stroke rolls do the second one that had two add the third one that had three and then all finish together and you'll have a fun little exercise to do right there um, all right so let's move ahead because time is flying we're probably we're definitely going to go over an hour today my apologies if anyone has plans um, but there's a lot to do so uh, now looking at other rhythms, there is a specific rhythm for Kondomle called the loop that is uh, played for Yan Sa a lot of the time. And the bell pattern goes. And the drums usually play the same idea, but filled in. So 
so this is going to be adapted into a little phrase, and this is almost identical to a drumline uh, warm-up that I used to do way back in the day. I won't say exactly how long back in the day, but way back in the day. Um, so the first bar of this pattern is going to go start all right hand, and this kind of cross pattern, we finally land after all the syncopation on four and we go. Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. Counting it, it goes like this. One and a, E and three, E, a four and. Try it with your right hand. Now try it with your left. And we're keeping these all even, no over accents. So from there, we're going to cut that phrase in half and just take the first two beats of it and repeat that where we go. And then the last bar, um, we are going to throw in a little bit more of this double stroke roll idea of just doing a little three stroke of one and a two and a three and a four and then left hand and a two and a three and a four. And this whole cycle, each section is going to re be repeated uh, one twice. So we start with ba ba da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 da ba da left 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 right 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 left 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 then we cut it in half ba ba da ba da ba ba da ba da ba ba da ba da the last measure ba do do ba do do ba do do ba ba do do ba do do ba do do ba all right so hopefully that makes sense um yes this is totally appropriate for woodblock sounding things this is straight uh sleigh sleigh ride right here um, so let's pass through this nice and slow one time and then we'll do one temp one time up to tempo ba, 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 ready right hand Thank you, Alana. I'm glad you enjoy it. All right, so let's do this whole cycle. Let's go up to a medium tempo and then we'll go all out in a uh, really fast. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Sweet. Uh, all right, one more time. Let's go fast because this rhythm typically representative of Yansai and the wind and the storms coming in, and it's pretty raging like the weather outside right now. So here we go. One, two, three, four. a little bit at the end but that's the idea and then if you want to play with this you can throw accents on this and I didn't transcribe this all out but everywhere there's a double you can play it either putting the accent all on the first note of the double 
or all in the accent of the second note of the double. So for example, if we're looking at just the first bar and we're gonna put the accent on the first note of the double. So we got accent. Accent tap. Um, so that feeling of back boom, back boom, that takes a lot of control to squeeze the stick down and just do a tap after the accent. Or you do it the other way, where you do the accent on the second note, where we go. something you can mess around with at home it makes uh, it's the next level of challenge when playing through this stuff and it helps a lot with crash patterns um, in samba schools because a lot of them are are combinations of accents and taps on the right hand so having that dexterity of being able to do double Very valuable so I recommend spending some time with that at home all right we are almost at the end so using the same pattern we're gonna talk about filling in spaces and a lot of teachers especially in Brazilian stuff because it's such a right hand dominated uh, style of music all the accents and important stuff happens on the right hand they'll teach you a part on the right hand and then just say fill in the lefts um, so here's a little exercise of what exactly that means so we're taking the same pattern. I cut it down um, to quarter notes and eighth notes instead of eighth notes and sixteenth notes. It's literally just math slash it in half or actually double the value, the value of the notes. Um, so those maybe who aren't as comfortable reading can see how this works up here. So tapping your foot wise, we're going one, really breaking it down. So now the idea is that whichever hand is leading in this situation, we'll start with the right. The left is just gonna fill in the blanks. Um, so the first blank between two right strokes is we need to fill in. And you can see this stays the same. a little bit but that's the idea where if you can keep this constant let's just throw in the first one right left right 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 let's add in the next one right left right left right next one And isolate your hand so you can just hear your right one because you want to make sure that's the same. Make sure you're doing it correctly. So that's the idea, nice and slow. Let's try it now with the left hand leading it. Here's our base pattern.
So now let's do these in order. Where we're gonna do the right hand first, play two measures of just where the right hand goes in, and then we'll add in the left hand uh, for two measures. And we'll repeat that a couple times, stop, and then do it all left hand lead, okay? One, two, and, and four. Try it, left hand lead. Here we go. Makes it. Whole thing. And stop. Sweet. It's a fun brain exercise. Hopefully, uh, Everyone's sticking with it. So this is going to be the same exact thing that we did, but it's written in the actual tempo that this pattern is normally done in the 16th note. So and before we were going ba, 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 ba. Now we're going ba, 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 ba. This is where the new tempo is, and it's going to be a little faster. So we're going to do the exact same thing, just for those who want to see how it's written properly quote unquote, this is what it looks like. So let's do the same thing, right hand first, ready, and. on my left hand on that one but you get the idea hopefully of uh, what that's all about and just filling in the spaces again you can take this nice and slow all the way to uber fast and oh we have these two all right these are the last two let's get through these i think we should be able to do this really quick using everything we already used um so we're going to be looking in this one the basic tocando samba head to playing samba like straight ahead um, your accents are on the downbeats and the uhs, one e and a two e and a three e and a four. And then in samba, we use a lot of what's called a buzz roll. At this, up to now, we've been talking about double stroke rolls. A buzz roll is where you're not counting the number of bounces. We were counting two before, but now it's a buzz that is undefined in its bouncing. And you can play that as a continuous roll. For those of us who play orchestra, your pianissimo buzz roll. Um, I'm a little out of practice on that, but in this case, in samba, it's a single stroke buzz press into the head. And technique wise, that's all you're doing, it's just pressing, you're trying to get a good amount of bounces. You don't want too short by digging into the head, and you don't want it to be too loose. It's somewhere right in between, somewhere about like that. Thank you, Miley. Um, so in this pattern, we're going to do <clears throat> work on our accents of one E and a two E and a three E and a. So that's our check pattern. And then when we get into the second and third bar as our repeat, we're going to do a four E a one. And you'll see in the transcription, there's a line with two little slashes across it. That's indicating the note that's buzzed. And in the sticking, you'll see an R and a Z for buzz. That's the one that is going to be the press stroke. So we're gonna do the first repeat, we're gonna just go four E a one. And on the second repeat, we're gonna go three E a four E a one. So let's just cycle this nice and slow and then we'll speed it up as we go. So one E and a two E and a don't forget to tap your foot.
And these buzzes tend to break the idea of continuing this right, left, right, left, right, left continuously because we're doing two rights together. Right, right, left, right, right, left, right. And putting a buzz on the second. Right, buzz, left, right, buzz, left, right. Um, but you shouldn't lose track of where those right, left, right, left, right, lefts are because we're going to come right back to that as we repeat to the top. So let's do it now, the form as written. And we'll start nice and slow and then go faster the next time. So baka, daka, baka, daka, ready and Before we speed up, let's do that all left hand lead. So exactly the same thing, left, right, left, right, left, right. And then when we get to these first and second endings, the buzz is gonna be left buzz, right, left buzz, left, left. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Left hand, da, 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 let it go. All right, just to hear what it sounds like up to tempo, let's go up. We'll do one pass through right hand, one pass through left hand, and leave it. About here. One, two, three, four. not done that on left hand much thanks for coming in john i appreciate it all right so let's leave that one last exercise of the whole thing and i can let you all go um so similar idea um except instead of buzzes we're going to be doing the double stroke rolls and we're going to be doing this kaisha pattern it's not really kaisha pattern it could be on kaisha it could be hepiki it could be tamborine that's more based in bahia where the accents are going to be one and a two and a three and a four so if we're sticking with our right, left, right, left pattern, the first two notes are non-accented and the second two are accented. So just the check pattern is going And then if we do left hand lead, same thing, where we go one, two, and a, two, three, and a, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, one, two, and a, two, three, and a. Now, when we get into the repeat bars, the first one, um, we're starting right hand lead. It's going to be the first two beats are the same, one. And three and four, we're going to do double bounces. Right, right, left, left, right, 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 left, left, right, left. But it's going to be more in tempo. And so those, those bounces will be a little bit quieter than the accents before it. But we're disregarding the accents for the moment. The sticking is right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left. 
throw in the accents. So then the whole bar three, the first bar, first repeated bar goes like this, three, four. So let's do bar one and bar two. Let's just repeat the two of those for the moment, then we'll get to bar three. <clears throat> And if you we need to go a lot slower on this and you're not quite having your double bounces yet, that's totally fine. You can take this all the way down to boom, boom, bap, bap, boom, boom, bap, bap. Right, right, left, left, right, right. That's totally okay. Take it as slow as you need to take it. Uh, for the sake of time right now, I'm going to skip ahead to uh, the third bar here, where we start the third bar the way we end the second bar, where we're going right. with a roll all the way out of it. So just that bar, ready, go. Ta, ta, ta. One more time that pace. Now let's go a little bit faster. And that's still about half tempo where we want to be, but it's a good place to start. So um, just to run it by real quick, the same thing starting left lead is going to go da 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 One more time, and. All right, so let's see if we can put this whole thing together. Um, about this tempo. So our 16th and poo poo cha cha, poo poo cha cha, poo poo cha cha. Then we get into the doubles. Do do ka ka, do do ka ka, do go do go da da, do go do go da da, do do ka ka, do go ka ka, do go do go da da, do go do go da da. All right, so let's just loop it. We'll go bar one, bar two, bar one, bar three, and loop that whole cycle nice and slow. Two, ready, and. Just to throw craziness in there, let's do our left hand first. <clears throat> Wish me luck, not my strong suit. Ready, and... Just to challenge myself and anybody out there who wants to take it up a tempo, let's go like ducka, 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 about here. Pass through it one time right hand, pass through one time left hand. One, two, ready, and. Success. 
thank you for everybody who hung out into the end. Those are just tools to help de develop your dexterity. Again, it's stick control Brazilian style, using stuff that we already know from Brazil or learning new stuff from Brazil and applying it to ways to increase your dexterity using sticks. So again, in the uh, description of the video, I put a link to the transcription of all these parts. If you wanna take them home and practice them at home, use a metronome, use a metronome, use a metronome, do it. Um, and I think that's about it. If you guys can throw in some donations for the class, it is greatly appreciated. If not, no worries, share the video, sign up to the YouTube, whatever you can do to contribute if you want to. If not, it's all good. Uh, we're all going through hard times, so I appreciate you even being here today, and I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. Hydrate, wash your hands, and all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you so much. Beijos. Ciao, ciao.